Hey, folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on the Hagenstead map. Let's get back to reliving the glory days. Restore. And then we've got nothing on the map at the moment. And it's back there. So we can now go and remove anything we want, which means that we can... There's all sorts of stuff we can do. What about one of the power lines? See those huge power lines that are uh, all the way up through, or one of the buildings or something. Let's let's see how powerful this tool really is. Let's go and have a look at this. Uh, tell you what, before we do that, before we get too carried away with it, uh, we'll leave you. We'll take you right here and... drive up to there so I could remove the railway from railway field and we could just have an ordinary plain end of the field you know I don't think I need to have another pass on there I'll probably want a couple of passes down the other end of the field I suspect but probably not so if I go there like that press H on there he will run down through here it's going to meet that tunnel down there, which is going to cause him a bit of a problem. I can tidy that bit up afterwards, I'm sure of it. Not too much issue. Just want to make sure he's going to get around that corner. I'll do something correct here for once. Nope, he's just going to walk into it and try and tip the entire tank right there onto the ground. So, we will back out a little bit and... Bring that on round like that, and then I'm going to come on round here because we turned the corner. We've kind of got a big chunk of the slurry spreading missing, so I'll bring that back over there like that. And I don't really know what I'm doing here, so we're just going to try and, you know, wing it and... Make it look like we know what we're doing. Help us see, hasn't you? Haven't completed anything at all, you liar! Right, you carry on and do that. I've got a job to do up here. We want to go up there and we want to see if we can make that one disappear. Now, will it just do that one and leave the wires up in the air? Will it? You know, what? what what's it going to do here? So we look at it. Hide pylon H like that. The wires stay in place. The pylon is the bit that disappears. Okay, that's actually really cool. So then we go back in here. And I'm going to go and put that one back. There. Right back where it was without any trouble at all. Okay, it's a very, very powerful tool. And I like it. I like it a lot. And it also why you can't use it when the drivers in the... Uh, when, when you're sitting in a tractor, because it's H, which is the hired help option. So we've got hide Cliff Rock 2 over there. Uh, railroad tunnel, brick wall. See, we, we can hide everything. This is so cool. So we can actually get rid of some of the little buildings and stuff like that if we want to. Um, and, yeah, we, we've got options for doing things that we didn't have before so thank you very much to everybody that kept insisting that i get this mod and try it out and no i'm not very good at keeping up to date with the various different mods that turn up on mod hub and what their capabilities are i sort of you know a lot of these mods i look at them and i think yeah but this really looks like the type of mod that could cause a lot of bugs and cause issues and cause everything to crash um Maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't. I, I don't really know. I always have an issue with Farming Simulator. I didn't for a little while after I changed my computer, but I'm back to having the same issue. When I click on that screen right there and I go into it to make any changes, to leave that screen, to I click on any other screen, the game freezes for about 10 seconds before it will go to another screen. Or if I just press escape again to come out of the, the escape menu. It takes about it freezes for about 10 seconds before it will come out of that menu. Um, but then when I press escape again, obviously on that screen, so it will do it again. So I've always got to make sure I leave that screen. 
I've never been able to figure out why it does it, because I did mention it once before a long time ago, and nobody else said that they had the same kind of issue. Not one other person had that kind of issue. So I'm going to ask again if anyone has that kind of problem. It always freezes up for about 10 seconds. It never shows on the recording, though. Um, it looks like I have clicked on the next bit that I clicked on or pressed escape and left the screen and it does it instantly according to the recording um, but that's recording the game signals rather than what I'm visually seeing on the screen so sometimes they don't always line up but that's just standard with recording games uh, but the that bit so then it just kind of freezes on the next screen for 10 seconds um but yeah i've i've never been able to figure out why it is i suspect it's because i've got lots of mods in here um but other people have got lots of mods and it doesn't happen so it must be a particular mod combination that's causing some weird conflict but i've yet to figure out what it might be just drove all the way up the hill all the way around and so that I would be close to the end of the field where I stopped and then I thought you know what we could actually just do a quick pass along the top end of the field up here keep the slurry running along there uh, so yeah and then it ended up taking a bit longer didn't it so never mind we'll run you down over to there turn you off and now I'll bring it up here and this one can carry on so we've got a vehicle to go and put away in the shed, the one that we were doing the drilling with, we've also got the tractor. Uh, well, we've actually got two of these to put away in the shed. So we've done all the drilling. That's that's all finished. I got sugar beet down here that I'm waiting on. We're waiting on the price to come up to get a decent price on us. We're 422 at the port right now. And my price list, here it is. Uh, sugar beet 481 is the best price that I've seen for sugar beet. So um, we'll wait patiently on that one. And yeah, there's you to put away as well. And then there's you here just to finish off the last tiny little bit of silage right there. We run you over to the clamp tip you out and then we're gonna roll the clamp so we keep an eye on the slurry spreading see how that's going on and we also want to keep a bit of an eye on this one so that we can roll this out and make sure that our silage is flattened down properly so I'm gonna just wrangle my way across this bit right here there we go and there okay all done there's a little tiny there's less than a liter left in the trailer and so it's just going to tip for all eternity there you've got that huge great big lump in there despite the fact that there isn't actually anything in the trailer so we we'll go and fill it with something else and it won't have that bit left there i'm gonna unhitch the trailer now and then we'll just use the tractor to wiggle backwards and forwards although actually I might use the tractor for a minute to do a bit of I'm gonna bring this one over here I'm gonna unhitch that one right there we'll use this tractor for a minute to do a little bit of muck spreading because I mean we're doing slurry over in the other field but we are not gonna have enough slurry to be able to do everything so if we were to bring this trailer over here this muck spreader here and bring this one online we're going to need to lose the front weight just for a minute. It's not a problem. So we go here and lose the front weight like that. Drop that one down. And then I can go and get the mill. Helper D has stopped work unexpectedly. Well, I'll be honest, it wasn't all that unexpected. And I will hook that one on. Do I want to be doing this? I want to get this one. The only reason I'm questioning whether I should be doing that is because I'm actually thinking, no, maybe not. Maybe I should be rolling. I'll roll the silage clamp first. 
If I get the silage clamp rolled first, then we can worry about doing that bit because it might take a while to roll the silage clamp. And in the meantime, the slurry and the manure is being spread anyway, so it's not really that much of an issue. Um, but the silage is going to need to be rolled regardless of what we do. And then eventually, we're going to need to be putting fertilizer on the other fields. So again, you know, slurry and manure it can wait. We can do that after the first growth stage as well if we really want to. It's not going to affect anything, and that means that we can be getting the fertilizer on the fields at the same time. There's another load. I'm not going to go... I'm going to try going around this way this time. I'm going to turn left here. I'm going to run around this way and just sort of see what the time difference is. I don't imagine it's going to be a huge amount of difference. Um, but the removable objects thing, I mean, like, some bits down there that we could remove when we want to expand our sheds and stuff like that. Obviously, we can clear stuff back out of the way. Um, I could remove that little hut there on the side and make that feel even bigger. I'm not going to do that. That seems a bit crass, removing old buildings like that that are on the side. There are bits of history right there. We don't want to be destroying those. It just seems wrong on so many levels. So, no, we won't, we won't be doing that. Um... But, you know, may maybe there are some things, that some buildings in that that we can remove. It wouldn't sort of seem to spoil the ambiance of the map. We, d we don't really want to destroy everything here. And come around here. I mean, maybe right at the end, if we go for, like, a massive field, having this thing that will remove all the placeable objects on the map means that we really could have just one giant field. Turn the entire map into one giant field. We could, um, except, wasn't going to remove the roads. I was going to leave the roads where they were. Uh, right, I'll ignore those for a minute, and I want to go to this one. So I have talked myself out of doing this particular job for a minute. So what I'll do is I'll just put that slurry spreader over, uh, muck spreader over there, and. Unhitch there. I'll get my front weight back on because I'm going to want that for extra downward pressure on our silage clamp over here. And then we just got to start whizzing backwards and forwards on here. Shouldn't take too, too long to do it. We're on 12% compaction already. It's now up to 13%, so we're compacting it fairly quickly. Bit, bit rough up here on the top, admittedly. But it usually is on this job. This job is never one that gives you a smooth ride as an operator. Not unless you've been really properly working the clamp right from the start. Um, I mean, yes, you, you generally would work the clamp from the start instead of um, coming into it like this. But I do know plenty of people that have done rolling of a clamp with a small tractor. And that can be a rough ride. That is definitely what you would class as a rough ride. But, I mean, we're on 21% on this already. So I think we're doing pretty good with it. What I want is just to be able to drive up and down the front of the clamp fairly easily. I mean, it's starting to spread out a little bit here on the top. And that's, that's the important bit. That's the bit that we're after here. Kind of turn this into more of a drivable ramp right there. Just down like that. And there's a little bit of a clump right there. This is, this is the bit that we kind of want to work over with the wheels just to squash it down as much as possible. And then we will much more easily be able to... drive up to sort of deal with the rest of the clamp. Now there's a big lump on the right, oh sorry, on the left hand side right there that is causing the tractor to flop all over the place. And there we go. Right. That's definitely causing us some issues. We, we a bit of a bumpy ride there. We want to smooth that out. Make that a little bit better. 
You don't want it rough, you want it nice and smooth coming through there. Help F has stopped work. Tank is empty. I'm still smoothing this, but it's already looking a lot better. This is already looking considerably better. All right, so we're on 41% there. I'll stop there for a second. I'll go over to this one. It's surprising how much slurry we take to do this. We're going to need to be upgrading our slurry tank, I think. And I'm thinking that we're going to be sticking with pink slurry tanks throughout. So I'll work with this slurry tanker now until we've used up the current supply of slurry that we have and then we will see about upgrading it and getting a bigger one so this is going to be the last time that we use this one at 8,000 litres a time we've only got two full loads left to do with it anyway so it's not like we're going to be spending hours doing this job the rest of it's going to be manure that's going to be going onto the field so we're going to use the the other machine to do that which is absolutely fine once again not going to be any problems. So we come whizzing back in round here. So the next size up. Wondering if maybe we should consider selling this tractor and then buying an upgrade. Um, before, you know, or maybe we do both of them at the same time, can't we? So, obviously, our next tractor is, if we're buying a new tractor, it would be another big tractor. And then we could swap over the medium-sized voucher and bring that one over here. So, we've got the Garant at the moment. That one right there. Um, the Joskin right there would possibly be one, except that this is only an injector option. It doesn't have any other option on it, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, then you've got the Zunhammer right here. This one does have the option for just like this, or you can put a cultivator on the back on this one. So I'm thinking the Zunhammer would be nice. Doesn't have any color options. I don't think we've actually got the Stevie treatment on any small tankers here. It doesn't look like it. So I'd like to have the Zunhammer, but I'd like to have a Stevie version that allows me to take it in pink. Uh, I would like that one in pink. This one here requires too many horses. This one does require 180 horses. It also holds 18,500 litres of slurry, which is absolutely fantastic. So that's probably the one that we want to go for. I mean, really, I suppose I want to go and have a look through. Um, I've got the, the horse one right there requires 210 horsepower it doesn't have any color options on this one uh this doesn't have an option for just a spreader you've got to have the injector on it so not necessarily going to be and i don't have very many mods for slurry so we might have to do something about that i might have to go and look for a few extra mods for slurry so that we've got some more options for them I'll do that ready for next time, I think. I will remove... I, after I've done my sort of next lot of... When I start my next lot of recording, I'll get some additional slurry tankers ready for it so that we can sell this one and we can buy another one. Something along the lines of the Zunhammer, which is, you know, eighteen to 20,000 litres of capacity, which is about right for now for the small fields that we're working on. Um, so fewer trips that we have to do with it, and I definitely want it in pink. I'm going to just have that as a standard for our slurry equipment. Uh, is all our slurry equipment will be in pink? I think it, it it just it's just it's just right. It's just suitable. Who in their right minds is ever going to steal a pink slurry tanker? Um, no one's going to steal pink machinery. Full stop. It's just you, you'd never be able you'd never be able to sell it and. I know I've mentioned it before, but I will say it again. I have had people comment on videos saying that they know people who have pink machinery purely to stop it being stolen, which I think is absolutely brilliant. It's, it's an absolutely fantastic thing. So you get this pink machinery driving up and down in the fields and no one is ever going to steal it. How, how are you going to sell 
If you, if you were to go and steal, like, something that is stolen quite frequently is uh, mini diggers, like, small two, three ton mini diggers. Who's going to steal a pink one? You've got a bright pink mini digger. Who's going to go and steal that? The, the, the thing that they do with mini diggers is that they sell them. They shift them on quickly, as quickly as possible. Who's going to get a pink one and then where are they going to sell it it's just not going to happen is it so the advantage of having it colored brightly like that is is absolutely like it's, it's there right in front of you i know that there are plenty of people who would not want to be seen driving around in a bright pink machine um and that is your choice you know you then have to thwart the thieves some other way I mean, the amount of tracking devices that we've now got available to us that you can go and fit on machines very, very easily, it's, it does make it a lot easier to find out where your stuff is. So you, you do have that option as well. So you can just, you just get tracking devices and put on all of your machinery. Works really, really well. Um, that's something that... Um, I know several people have done that. They fit tracking devices on their machine. Some of them fit two or three tracking devices on each machine in order to make absolutely certain that, you know, if one of them is found, then there's another one on the machine that won't be found. And it just helps to keep things going. So you don't have to have the whole pink machinery thing, but I reckon it would definitely help. Now, we're on 63% on this one. We're getting a much more even ride across the top here. It's nice and smooth. All feels good. And just bring down that side there. So sort of even out right across the face here now. It's starting to, to look quite good all the way across there. Um, and we've got our smooth ride all the way across. Helper is empty already they get through the slurry pretty quickly i'm on 70 percent up here 71 tempted to just keep going until we hit 75 before i go and get the slurry tanker again uh it's really not going to take very long there we go so we've got 75 on there and you over here you haven't got very much at all. There's a little tiny strip left down the side of the field, and I'm questioning whether it would be worth me coming over and doing that little tiny strip, to be honest. Um, this field is bigger than you think. Like, it's a, quite a number of loads are having to be brought over here to spread this field. Definitely thinking that something along the lines of 18,500 litres would be about right. Um, I mean, I don't know what the Stevie treatment is, whether he's actually done the small tankers or not. I'm kind of hoping he has. I've got a full pack of his mods that I'll go and look through and see if we've got something suitable in there. There may be, there may not be. We'll, 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 we'll wait and see. So, last load now. I'm not going to bother taking the little part load that will be left from the cows. We'll just go straight into the manure supplies that we've got right there and hope that that is enough to keep us going. So we want to drop into there. 11,000 litres in there. So it's not quite half a tank full that would be left. Um, Not really worth bother. So we'll take this lot, we'll go over to the railway field, we'll finish that little strip down the side. I will do the strip down the side, we'll do all of it, we'll make sure everything gets a coat. And then we'll come back over here, we'll do a little bit next to the river just to finish out the tank full of slurry that we got. And then we're switching over to the uh, manure spreader and we're, we're doing that one so the manure that we've got the supply of it we were talking about taking it over and selling it because we get more money for that than we do for the actual slurry um at the moment that's not going to happen how much have we got we've got 113,000 liters of the stuff so we got plenty to spread on the fields whether we'll have a little bit left over to go and sell eventually i don't know i mean it sort of depends on how much we produce now because we bought a few more cows so we did increase the number of cows that we got 
And it'd be interesting to see how much extra slurry we get from the cows over a full cycle. So I am going to do the strip up through here. I'm just going to watch it as it goes up through. Thumbs up to there, and then he'll turn round, do the last little bit. You know what? I'm not even going to bother with the hired help doing that. I'm going to do it just by my lonesome. I will bring that one over and run it up through there. So that field is now finished. So we've done the railway field. Next, we need to head over and do the... What should we call this field over here? This is obviously railway field because of the railway. Okay, so we, we got we got railway field right there. Um, this one over here, I was thinking bridge field because the two bridges right next to it. Um, you could always call it toll field because of the little toll hut that is up there. Although that doesn't really look like a toll hut. I'm not quite sure what that is. That might not even be an old toll or anything like that. That could just be a more modern electrical substation hut, in which case it's not nearly so impressive. So bridge field is probably the one that we want. And then that field over there... Uh, I don't know, garden field, because it's next to the garden centre, something like that. I never, ever worked anywhere that had inventive names for their fields, by the way. Like, it's always very mundane names you got railway you've got um i worked on one place that had a few fields next to the ra the old railway um th there wasn't actually any tracks on it but it used to be a railway so you had one field that was running alongside that was well it's kind of one field was a big square that had the railway on one side of it so that one was called railway fields and then you had a field right next to it that was quite... It was a longer, thinner field, and that ran next to the railway as well. Um, but that one ran next to the railway line, they said. So they called it line field because the field was in a long line next to the railway line. And then the other one was just next to the railway. It's still next to the railway line, but it wasn't a long field. So you had line field and railway field. And what was the other one? The other one was the f the last field on the farm that was closest, uh, that was still part of the, the, you know, the fields up against the railway. So there was three of them that were against this old railway track. And uh, the last one... No, no, there was, there was a fourth field. There was a smaller field that didn't get used apart from grass, mostly. Um, there was no arable stuff done on it. So you had railway... Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.